it's ten past six, it's barely light and really we should still be tucked up in bed fast asleep. But where are we going at this time of morning? The allotment. We're not going to do any digging or weeding. We're going to meet someone. We had a phone call last week asking if we would take part in the BBC Radio Leeds breakfast show and foolishly we agreed. The problem is we have to meet the presenter Ollie at quarter to seven at the allotment. So that's why we're going out at such a stupid early time of day. Anyway, I'll see you when we get there. We've made it down to the plot. We've got here before Radio Leeds, which is our first success of the day. So it's now down to what Radio Leeds want to find out from us. Yeah, very well. How are you? Yes, just yeah, a bit more detail. Kind of how a, how uh, a year on the allotment goes. So kind of how we, we seasonality, the the changes to what you should be doing, and some advice as well from Martin and Sue for anybody uh, allotment allotment years. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Thank you. As opposed to musketeers. Yeah. <laughs> I'll probably say musketeers now. <laughs> <laughs> so what can you hear wood for James? What else can we hear? That chattering is a magpie. Yeah, chicken. <laughs> but we've, we've, we've heard a donut earlier and donut. a robin and blackbirds are usually around. Sparrows are around too. Yeah, the twittering sparrows.
Good morning to you. Yes, live from Horbury, the Green Lane allotments. Can you hear the birds tweeting in the background? Take a listen to this. Wood pigeons, magpies, sparrows and a dunnock too, I'm told. And I can see all the fresh produce around me, the bright colours of daffodils and that early morning sunshine as well, making it a perfect location as we talk the benefits of allotments. Joining me this morning is Sue and Martin Garrett once again. Good morning, Sue. Good morning, Ollie. And hello to you, Martin. Mm-hmm. We're down here, we're at your allotment. You've got five uh, areas of allotment and you first got into allotments in the 90s. Yeah, we, um, we couldn't grow enough veg at home in our little garden, so yeah, we looked at buying a bigger property but couldn't afford, and in the end we decided the easy way out was to, to buy an allotment, to, to invent an allotment, which would be easy to get in, and so we wouldn't have any problems. Now this is a fantastic site, all the plots look to be really well kept, I can see chickens over there as well. So what do you enjoy about coming down and spending time on your plots? fresh air, mm. uh, definitely the exercise, I don't think I'd get the same sort of exercise doing anything else. Um, the fact that we can pick our own food and know exactly where it's come from, um, and just being in touch with nature, listening to the birds like you said, and we get frogs, toads, newts, hedgehogs, wow. the occasional <laughs> stoat. Foxes visit on a night, but we've never seen a fox yet. And we actually had a partridge once. Don't know where that came from, but we had a partridge. So you're in touch with nature. You feel the benefits of being outside in the fresh air. How does a year, a year of the allotment go? Because I guess it's very seasonal and changes when we go through the different seasons. Kind of what your tasks are. That's right. Although the seasons do sort of shift slightly depending on the weather. Uh, winter time, when we can get down here, which we have done this year, uh, it's been sort of preparing beds, digging, making sure that they're ready for planting. Uh, we're coming up to the period now where we'll be sowing seeds, raising seeds, and then later on planting them out once the frosts have disappeared. And then in the summer it's looking after the things that we've grown, keeping them healthy, watering them weeding them uh, and then the nice thing picking everything <laughs> which actually takes quite a long time uh, and then you're back to winter again so it's very cyclical it's it's quite nice to be in Turkey yeah nature. but the seasons do fluctuate sometimes we'll get an early spring sometimes a late one it just depends on the year really no two years are the same Martin let's talk about the local produce what kind of stuff are you growing down here so we're, we're still harvesting leeks, which we put in the plot last year. We've got some cabbages, red cabbage, we've got some savoys, normal green cabbages. We've just got some bacon and sprouts and broccoli coming on, which we're pleased about, because we've normally missed out on bacon and sprouts and broccoli. Uh, I think that's about it. At the minute. We've, uh, yeah, carrots, uh, yeah, carrots and parsnips. But they're coming to an end now. They're, they're sort of, we've been picking those since my day last September. So they're just about finished now. But we'll be sowing some more for next year soon. Sounding very tasty, very colourful. You blog, you vlog, you offer advice for budding gardeners, people down their allotments. How can we find out more about that? So you can search for us on YouTube or Facebook or any of our blogs. We, we st- I don't know about offering advice, we don't really like to uh, pretend we're experts. We, we've done it a long time and we appreciate that things can go drastically wrong any particular year. Every year is different, you just have to adapt to whatever you yes. get that year. It's no good saying you can plant something the first week in April or if it's in Patrick's day you're supposed to plant spuds. It doesn't always work if it's a cold wet spring it's no good planting stuff to you but you're just right just will not know. well that was some lovely advice to finish the interview thank you so much sue and martin garrett here at green lane allotments in horbury and nick i think it's incredibly valuable for our modern life to actually have these spaces where we can come be in touch with nature and also benefit in our physical and our mental health too Perfect. Finished. Yeah. You too. Okay. Okay. Cheers.
See ya.